Hi, this is Michael Munshaw, artist on Marvel Masterpieces and Marvel Premiere Cards. You're listening to the two hippest dudes in the sketch card industry, Ian Taylor and Norn Rad, on the Marvel Card Collectors Podcast. Hello everybody, my name is Ian Taylor and welcome to the Marvel Card Collectors Podcast, brought to you by the Marvel Cards Fan Collective, an awesome community of card collectors and creators. You can find our two groups on Facebook, details of which are at the end of this podcast, so come check us out. With me is my co-pilot in all things Marvel Cards. He's been social distancing for years in his cosmos, searching for a podcast for his boss Galactus to devour, and now he's found one at long last. It's Norin Rad. Hello, hello, hello. I'm here. Warning all of you that Galactus is coming. He, he is. He is. So watch out. Um, I actually had to. I, I, well, I didn't have to. I actually read the Wikipedia entry for Silver Surfer in, in preparation for that, just to try and get some inspiration. You looked and, like you had some kind of epiphany or something. Like well, you looked like you were glowing. So I kind of. I kind of feel like for years your genius has been misunderstood, and now I finally get it. <laughs> Thank you. I've been waiting for you to just say that to me. But that's cool. Plus, I'm I'm really appreciative that you enjoyed my writing. So that was awesome. More than welcome. More than welcome. Uh, on this week's episode of Therapy with two car collectors who sit in their offices and talk to each other, um, uh, Galactus is is not with us. However, um, uh, 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 Galactus, uh, a world devourer in terms of his artwork and his marvelous sketch work. Um, I'm tickled pink that Michael Munshaw is with us this week. Hello, Michael. Hey, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? I don't know how I feel being compared to Galactus, but I guess we're just going to have to roll with it today. He's well, a very complex character, okay? Very good presence, your Galactus. You know what I mean? Galactus bigger something. bigger than life. Well, and I hope everyone's not let down after they were thinking you guys were having Galactus come on, and now it's just me. So. That's next week's episode. I think I, everyone's I, prepared. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I think that'll be a two-parter. He's a big fella. Hot. He's a big fella. <laughs> oh dear me well it's 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 going off the rails already and it took a, took me a good few seconds to get myself started on this podcast um michael do, does anyone call you mike by the way it, you, you can call it either one go by either one so no, i'm just curious because i always see you yeah. saying michael on the, um on all your you know that's kind it's, of your, your I, brand. you know what with social media you i don't know because you always want to try to build a brand you always want to try to keep things mm-hmm. consistent so I just use Michael on the social media stuff, but people call me Mike all the time. So yeah. it makes no difference to me. I quite like that it's two two um, syllables, Michael Munshaw, and your surname. I love your surname. I, I love, love Munshaw. It. I always say it in my head. Like I always, when I see your work, I'm like, "There's Munshaw." I don't know what it is. I don't. I know it's weird, but I don't think of Michael. I do Munshaw all the time. That's fine so as long as you recognize it. That's all that matters. That's it. That's it. Recognize it, then all right, I'll take that. So thank you. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's absolutely wonderful, wonderful stuff. I still don't own any of your work, and I'm well. I'm, we'll take I'm care. Of it. Well, well, <laughs> well. To be fair, I've um, I, I've often talked about this uh, mythical um, set of blank black cat sketch covers I've got. Oh yeah. Tucked away, yeah. Um, and I've got five of them tucked away, and I already know that I'm going to commission um, Tony Perna to do one of them. Um, and I think yours is going to have to be on the list because I've seen some of the sketch oh. covers you've been well, putting thank out. You very much. Wow. Um, and they are, <laughs> they're, no, they're just bonkers. You know, because I've, I've, uh, obviously I've seen your work on sketch cards. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's very interesting when you obviously work on a sketch cover. It's obviously a bigger palette. Yep. And I, I kind of get I kind of look at some artists who go from sketch cards to sketch covers and it just it just kind of springs forth how how much talent um uh, they can bring to the to the covers so yeah no it excites me a lot and you've got a, a couple of um more than a couple actually of really good pieces on your website oh, well, uh, you. which we will pimp uh, shortly so michael uh, I should up that? before Sorry. this oh my gosh go on um whereabouts are you based uh, a beautiful, lovely Mechanicsville, Maryland. It's about an hour south of Washington, D.C. Mechanicsville? Oh, wow. Yeah. Just I've a seen... tiny little 
country town in St. Mary's County. We're just kind of down here amongst the trees in the woods, and it's nice and quiet. And then yet you can drive one hour up north, and you're right in the middle of Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. So I love, you know, I really like it out here. It's quiet. It's serene. So, um, you know, we like it down here. That's nice. Nice. Mechanicsville, I always saw the – I always saw Mechanicsville on your on your posts um, yeah. on Instagram, and for some reason, I, I, I never associated that was a place name. Because <laughs> it, it's Mechanicsville, but it sounds like something you'd, you'd kind of you know someone would call their studio, for example. Yeah. We could well, so like in Instagram, can I change it to like say M Square Studio or something like that? Yeah, you can. You You'll can have to. <laughs> you gotta teach me that. Yeah, you can bespoke that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. To be honest with you, that's given me an idea. I don't know why we don't do that on our podcast feed. Anyway, <laughs> knowing you could do that with your um, sketch card hive post, you could have them Zen La as the place. Oh, yeah. Oh, shh. Yep. I've given you an idea now, haven't I? <laughs> and, Holy and you crap! Know what? It All might right. be. You, you must go have back taken and... notes at the same time now. Going, oh yeah, when we're done with this, that's this a, a good one. Yeah, you heard my pen clark, and I was like, all right, fine, let's do that. Let's I'm not try sure it out. You can edit them after the fact. Anyway, anyway. Um, so, Michael, I, uh, you, <sighs> thank you. You were one of our first intro artists. Yes. Uh, yeah. Episode oh, six cool. or it's seven, fun. I think. Um, and you're one of our first kind of listeners on the artist spectrum yep. as well, because you messaged yeah. us and said, and said, "Oh, I listen to you while I'm while I'm working." And yeah. I was like, "Oh, where where I is you?" That was. Marvel premiere 27, wait, 2019, I think 19, I was working yeah, on. you'd have been working guys, on. Yeah, but it had been Marvel premiere 2019, I think I was working on when you guys first started the yeah. podcast or so. So, yeah, no, it, I, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out this whole community and all of this stuff, and it's a wonderful experience meeting everybody and learning everybody. But when you guys came out with that podcast, I was like, this is crazy. I didn't think that this was that big of a deal that, you know, we just sit here and we draw our cards, send them in, you know, that's it. So try to sell some APs and take it on, you know, go on to the next project. But when you guys came out with the podcast and I was listening, I was like, this is cool. They speak. I understand what they're saying, you know, and especially when you have artists on, I was like, oh, been there, done that, felt that. So, no, it's really cool. So I do enjoy listening to you guys, and especially if I can cue it up when I'm working on something, it is enjoyable. Ah, we appreciate that. Thank you. Well, we're, we're, we're blessed to have you listen. Um, and now everyone else can listen to you while they're creating yes. their art. So uh, that's kind of a bit meta, really. Um, so do you uh, kind of I, – I obviously I'm, I've seen your work on – Mm-hmm. the more recent sets and I've, I've seen you put photos of you doing cons and think obviously not so much now um yeah we're not sure what comic cons are anymore so yeah yeah well I, to be fair I've, <laughs> I've not been to many of them myself so uh, we don't tend to have as many over here um but where did you kind of tell us tell us your origin story how did you how did have, have you always been an artist is it kind of your main thing how do yeah. you get sketch cards What's i don't the- you know i don't know how far back in time we all want to go. But ever since, you know, like middle school, I always drew and, you know, I hated school really. (laughs) So I would be kids sitting in French class and not taking French notes and instead sketching a picture of Superboy fighting wildfire or something from the Legion of superheroes. And then friends would always be like, you need to be an artist. Did you ever think about drawing your own comics? Did you ever think about doing that stuff? And then it was then that I kind of dawned on me and I was like, you know what? The only way I'm going to get through this school thing is through art. And that's the only way I'm going to be able to get through all of this. So that's when I started to take all the art courses that I could in high school, um, really went in that direction and then uh, going to college, um, you know, getting an art degree, a degree in graphic design with a minor in illustration. So I've been drawn since like 13, 14. Um, wow. And, you know, the I guess the goal was always to be one day I'll be a se- sequential artist one day. You know, wouldn't it be great that one day I'm going to be the artist on the Superman comic? And then that's when I will have made it. So that was the goal. Never quite got there. Never quite made it there. But, um, you know, along the way, I've always been dabbling in it here and there. And then um, the boys came along, and then once you have kids, that your whole life changes. So you got to, yeah. yeah, everything gets kind of reprioritized and whatnot. 
So then it wasn't until they had gotten a little bit older and they were into their friends and video games and stuff like that that I had more free time on my hands. So then I started saying, okay, well, let's get back to drawing. Let's get back to doing some stuff. So um, I got back into it again with the idea of being sequential art and um, submitting stuff. Um, this was even before we had the internet and you had wow. to draw stuff, put these packages together in 9 by 12 envelopes, mail wow. them off to the submission editor at Marvel Comics or the submission editor at DC Comics, and just you mail it off, and you would hope to hear something. Um, but then once the Internet came along, you know, everything started to um, – networking was much more easier, I guess, is the best way yeah. to put it. So now that I've bored everybody about that, you only care about sketch cards. So about 2000. No, it's so. No, it's so. No, actually, I find this. No, I find this incredibly interesting. Actually, yeah, because um, I, I mean, all of us here are huge fans of sequential art, and you know, hearing about that process and what you're going through. I mean, it's crazy now, right? Because you work for Marvel, you work for all these yep. like freaking more. You've done all these really great things. It's it's pretty awesome, man. It's yeah, really no, fantastic. It's sideways way to get there but you know now i sit here and i don't know if i can say this can i say dc comics or is that not yeah but yeah, you know, you know, go you what you're doing man everything's gonna explode yes, i know exactly but no i can <laughs> sit here now and say hey you know what i've done work for marvel with marvel cards i've done work for dc with dc cards so i was like it's kind of just like checklist checklist it's not yeah. the way that i envisioned it and it's not the way that i pictured it when growing up and developing my skills and stuff but still this is great it's just you know how many people can say hey back in middle school i had a dream and then i followed it through till college and whatnot and now here i am as an adult and i can say you know what i kind of kind of made it there i kind of achieved that stuff so that's yeah. very so i do take um pride in that but from a sketch card standpoint um you know the internet was coming up and I don't know if you guys, I think the name of it was My Comic Space or Comic My Space or something like that. And this was before DeviantArt really came along. And if you set up a page, like, did you guys ever hear MySpace? Oh, yeah. It's like before Facebook. Yeah, so, I yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when MySpace came out, then a guy got an idea of doing My Comic Space, I think was the name of it. So it was just for comic people. And so then you would set up your own page. You would put some of your um, samples there. You would say, this is what I could do. And it was just another way of networking and people meeting people within the industry and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, so a guy reached out to me, Stephen Frank, and it was about 2007, 2000. No. Do I have that right? Yeah, 2000. Yeah, 2007, 2008. And he um, was putting together a fundraiser for um, March of Dimes. And he came up with the idea of putting together these three by five cards, sending them to artists and said, can you just do a pencil sketch or black and white sketch on these? And I'm going to raffle these off um, at these different March of Dime fundraisers. I think this is a great idea. So he sent me three or four. I can't even remember how many. So then I sketched those out and sent those in. And so that I guess those were basically my first sketch cards. Well, that's Stephen cool. Frank grew into Fivefinity cards, which I don't know if you guys are familiar with or yeah. not. Yes. And so then he started to uh, send me some projects with Fivefinity. And at first you're doing black and white and pencil sketches. And I'm like, OK, this is cool and all right. But then that's when everything started to go sideways because then everyone was like, well, you got to do these in color. And then you're like, huh? What? <laughs> color? You know how much longer that takes? You know how much work that takes? But yeah, so then um, that's when I had to go out and buy my first set of markers and then figure this thing out. Um, so then I did a number of projects with Steve uh, with Fivefinity. And then through that, um, met. Um, Bad Axe and did a project or two with his uh, thing. And then oh. you guys know. Yeah. And then you guys you know. His. Uh, way. Which, it was Women Pirates from. It is Treasure Chest and Booty. 20, 2010, 2011. Yeah. Maybe, I, like went in, I went in big on that set. <laughs> I went That's in big. On, so I probably do have something of yours. Oh, here. my God. I hope not. Those were terrible. <laughs> I love that set so much. Well, He's doing a sequel. Well, mine were terrible, but anyway. Oh, uh, well. That's another story. And then from there, met Ken Galan, which you guys know he's a member on the board. Yeah. Um, he did a couple of different sketch card sets. Um, so I worked with him on those. 
And then that led to work with Viceroy and then some other people. And before I knew it, I was doing three, four different projects at the same time. And at that point, I was just like, this is a lot of work. <laughs> and I don't know about the pay. Oh, the pay is, you know, Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause you. Yeah. We just had a guest appearance from Olive. Oh, yeah, she is. <laughs> the tail keeps running by the screen. Yeah. That is the funniest thing in the she's world. She's hunting squirrels right now, so she's going from window to window, and she's That's a little hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> so we'll we'll come back to Olive. I'm sorry, I couldn't I couldn't let a cat go past without going cat cat on the podcast cat on the podcast. We usually have dogs. <laughs> <laughs> where's she gone hang on a minute hang on he's gone to get her where, where is she where is she oh 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 pretty oh bless you I love cats <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry I've completely no, thrown okay. you off your, off your train of thought right. she gets more it's... attention around here than I do anyway so I'm used to it so <laughs> oh, <fair enough. laughs> right okay so rewind rewind alright rewind so, uh, Viceroy, and then you've got three or four projects going on at the same time. There yeah. we go. And right. then I was just like, <sighs> and I guess, you know, maybe the uh, I wasn't savvy enough or I wasn't smart enough about how to really market the APs and to really make s- decent um, sales off of the APs. So I was like, you know, why am I doing all of these um, projects? You know, I, I don't think I'm really getting to where I wanted to be with them. So at that point, I kind of... Um, faded out a little bit from the sketch card. And I said, you know what? I need to get back into the sequential stuff and let's get back to what I wanted to do and what I really felt that I wanted to do. Um, So then um, locally I met um, Visionary Comics, uh, Chuck Selner, and uh, at different local comic cons and stuff like that. And so then I, um, we developed a relationship. I inked um, a couple projects, a couple comics for Visionary Comics and then he asked me to be the art director and help out with um, some of their projects. So I became an art director for them, which was more scheduling, lining people up, yelling at the colorists that, you know, they're way behind in schedule. And then, you know, with the letterers waiting for pages. So we need to get more pages to them, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and we um, went to San Diego Comic-Con and I, it was in 2017, we were at San Diego Comic-Con, we were in the small press area. And at that time, I had been carrying around a small notebook of digital reproductions of my sketch cards. Um, I always found at a Comic-Con that there's people walking around that like cards and that they, rather than buying a big 11 by 17 print, it's much easier to buy a two and a half by three and a half card of their favorite character. Well, not everybody wants to lay down the money for an original sketch card at a Comic-Con. And then especially if, you know, a guy pulls up with his family of four, you know, and they like Wonder Woman, Flash, Batman, you know, they're not he's not going to lay down five hundred dollars for five originals or something like that. So I came up with the idea of taking a lot of my sketch cards that I did as originals, scan them in and then print them out as digital reproductions and then just sell them for a couple of bucks. So that way, if a kid came up to your table, they can walk away with something and they felt good. You know, there's always something so cool about a kid walking away with a baby Groot sketch card. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. This is so cool. So maybe I'm kidding myself, but I'm like, okay, well maybe we're planting the seeds for the next generation of fans or for the next generation of collectors that maybe that kid one day will come into it or whatnot. But anyway, so I had the notebook at San Diego Comic-Con with a bunch of the cards and stuff. This guy walks up going through the notebook and he's like, you still do sketch cards? And I was like, eh, nah, you know what? I do them here and there, but it's not that big of a deal and all that. And he goes, oh, well, would you want to do work for Upper Deck and Marvel? (laughs) And I was like, huh? And so he hands me his (laughs) business card and it's Zach from Upper Deck. That's hilarious. (laughs) And he's like, do you mind if I take a picture of some of your cards? I said, no, go right ahead. And he goes, well, you know, we're looking for some guys with your kind of style for upcoming projects. Would you be interested if I sent you an email with a follow up or something like that? I said, sure. Why not? And so then lo and behold, a couple months later, here comes an email from Zach. Hey, do you want to be a part of Marvel Premiere 2017? And I was like, wow, I'm in. And then that's awesome, man. (laughs) Wow. 
and the rest, wow. as they say, is history. So, and the rest if, it, if, is history. if it wasn't for Zach, we probably wouldn't be talking. <laughs> We've got to that get might, Zach on this podcast. That might be true. That might be very true. Because at that point, I was still like, ah, you know, even um, you know, obviously working on Marvel premiere, I was going to do it no matter what because it was Marvel, and you know, come on now, you know, who's going to say no to that? Yeah. Um, but, you know, even while I was doing it, I was like, do I really want to get back into the sketch card thing? Do I really want to, you know, is this the road that I really want to go down? But mm-hmm. it, I am really enjoying it. In these past couple of years, I really have enjoyed being able to do it. Um, you know, there's just something about that you can sit down, look at a blank two and a half by three and a half inch piece of a card. And within an hour, hour and a half, it's done. You know, you, you have a finished piece and then you can move on where, you know, you're not torturing yourself for weeks on end working on the same piece over and over again. So I have been um, enjoying the sketch card part of it. And then since then, you know, since Marvel premiere 2017, I've been more open to other projects. Um, And then for other companies that we won't mention, I've been doing other stuff such as the DC bombshells, um, Rick and that's a good set. Yeah, Rick and Morty, Steven Universe, that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's just been very enjoyable to be able to kind of bounce around all these different projects. And That's a real breadth of styles as well. That must be quite refreshing because the Rick and Morty is very different yes. to a Gamora, for exactly. example. Exactly. You know, and it's so wild. You know, you work on a Marvel set and that's a whole different style. That's a whole different technique and all of that. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I got to do Rick and Morty now. And then Rick and Morty, they just go like that. <laughs> And you're like, oh, this is a lot easier than the comic book stuff. This is cool. <laughs> but yeah, it is, that, it's very different. Like the <laughs> that I got to kind of challenge myself between these different projects that, you know, you're not in the same rut of you're just doing the same thing over and over and yeah. over. You know, with each project, I want to approach it in a different way and a kind of a different fashion. So as an artist, I do enjoy the fact that I got to do different techniques or, you know, do different styles. Cool. That's good. So when you when you when you're doing your uh, Marvel sketches, because some are different artists do it in different ways. Some of them, you see pictures where they've got all say they're doing fifty cards. They'll have them all there, penciled and or inked, but uncolored, and so they'll be working on them simultaneously. And then they yeah. But do you start to finish in one go for each card, or how how do you tend well, to? I have. It? I have evolved as an artist with all these projects. Um, so at first I was doing just one and well, okay. So I do have a story that I do want to tell you with the Marvel premiere stuff. I was thinking about that. So with Marvel, you know, I get the email from Zach about Marvel premiere 2017 and I don't know the product. I don't know what it's all about, but I do know from previous sketch card projects, cards just show up and it's like draw, 40 of these, whatever, you know, here, you know, you know what the subject is, but draw four. So panic immediately set in when I got the contract and I was like, Oh my God, what characters am I going to draw? What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? You know, again, this is Marvel premiere. You guys know what goes on with that. I didn't. So I'm making lists. I'm listing characters. I'm trying to figure out which ones I'm going to do, how I'm going to do them, do all of this stuff. And so then Saturday morning, I get up one more, um, one Saturday morning, there's the boxes on my front porch from upper deck. And I was like, they're here. The cards are here. Whip it open. Take a look at it. And I was like, wait, what? Hawkeye? Why is there Hawkeye stamped on the front of this? And then I flip it over and I was like, wait, what? Is this right? And then I go through the other cards and then like, oh, Thor. Oh, Captain America. I was like, I don't get to choose what characters I'm going to draw. <laughs> Uh-huh. I just wasted how many I don't know how much time I just wasted planning because they're telling me which characters I'm going to draw in this Marvel uh-huh. movie. <laughs> but so with that I just I did one card at a time so then I was just like okay I got to do Captain America so let me think about Captain America what I want him to be doing or how I want to do it so then I would sketch it out uh, you know right on the card there's no comps we don't have time to do comps and as much as I would like right. to do comps and all of that you're doing it on the fly and everything's alive that you see in front of you. So, you know, I would do the pencil, then the ink and do the thing and then finish it, move on to the next one. That wasn't as quite as efficient as I would have wanted it to be. So I kind of refined it as I was going along. Marvel masterpiece. Um, 
I would gang up, like I'd be like, okay, I'm going to do two Iron Man cards within this set. So let me do these two cards at the same time. Same markers, same colors, that kind of thing. So that sped things up. But mm. still, I was just like, mm. And then, you know, as you said, Ian, I was – you know, be at Comic Cons and I would run into my buddies and we would be talking and um, different sketch card artists would be like, oh, yeah, I got to do 40 of something or other. And they would explain how they just put them all out on the table and they would just do them all up. And I was like, how, what? How does that work? How would you even be able to do that? Well, on a project that I can't talk about that I just completed. Ooh. Exactly. So I was like, I got to do this smarter because this is the quantity was larger than I had ever done before. And I was like, I got to be smarter about this with the timeline and the quantity. I got to figure this out. So then I did break it into groups of 25 and I was just mm. like, okay, so 25, let me plan them. These are the 20. And I had lists, I had notes. I was like, okay, in this group of 25, I'm going to do the X-Men universe. And so then these are the X-Men characters that I would do or would want to do and all of that make that list out. No, those are the ones that I want to do. So then I would pencil all 25 of them. Then I would ink all 25 of them. Then I would grayscale all 25 of them. Then I would go in color all 25 of them and then touch them up again with some ink at the end and say, okay, done. Um, and I found that moved along much better and was much more efficient for me to do. So I think with projects going forward to that size, I'll probably do it that way. That's wow. really cool. That's interesting. That's interesting, because I've uh, I've not had a, a, a chance to watch any as yet, um, but I know you've been doing some live draws recently with some oh, of the other. Yeah. That's yeah. That's not like how it works. No. No. no, no. <laughs> Two do, uh, do knuckleheads. It's just that's a free for all for an hour and a half. So. <laughs> I've heard. That's I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> The three of us get together and we start right, you know, even before um, Dre turns on the video, we get the three of us will connect, make sure we're all cool and all of that. And we'll be like, well, what are you working on? Well, what are you working on? What are you working on? And we'll talk. And then ultimately, we'll probably talk the other ones out of what they were about to do. And so then we end up (laughs) Well, you can't do that. What? Are you sure? And, you know, and they did that to me just on this last one. I had this plan and they're like, nah, dude, you can't do that. (laughs) I was like, really? And they're like, well, you can try if you want to, but, you know, better you than us. And I was like, all right. (laughs) Then scrapped that whole idea. So then I pulled out one of my regular, um, my own personal sketch cards. And I was just like, all right, what am I going to do with this blank then? (laughs) And we just end up talking and shooting the breeze and all of that. And you're just drawn, talking, and all of that, and then whatever comes out comes out. That's yeah. great. For, for those who might not know what we're talking about, um, uh, both uh, on Andre Orsch uh, Dre, at Dre Studios and uh, Jalen Warner um, have been doing some live draws, um, both on their own pages, plus, uh, plus also on MCCW with guest artists um, who've included uh, Jason Montoya. Um, and Michael Monshaw, and I'm trying to think who else has been on this. It's 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 getting to be quite a party. Ray had Ray Rancho on this week. So. Oh yes. Oh really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yep. Cool. Yep. Yep. Uh, given where Ray is in the world, because I think he's Philippines. I want to say. Or somewhere over that that end, Philippines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that was at quite a bizarre time of day because obviously Dre is in Canada, um, same time zone as, as you guys, and then Philippines. So I, I I did see it popping up on my Facebook, but I generally only got a certain window of hobby time to actually <laughs> sit down and do this kind of thing. <laughs> Otherwise, my wife and my five year old, almost five year old, dictate everything that goes on. Much as I'm sure that Olive the cat dictates everything that you do, <laughs> and knowing yes. uh, Winnie and Nicholas and your good lady uh, dictate <laughs> what you do. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. So, speaking of um, um, times, I'm, I'm I'm curious. Do you do you um, is your your day job, if you like, is that yeah. is that um, are you kind of graphic design illustration, or is this now your kind of full time gig, or how how does it no, balance? Um, I'm always curious I'm, how artists manage actually. Up. To actually pay the bills, I have a full-time job. I'm the printing officer for the Library of Congress. Um, and so what that means is that... <laughs> what? It's no, on don't my drop Facebook that page. And no, it's, like that's it's on my social media feed, so don't act like this is something else. Don't you do that. Read. 
This is genuinely news to me. Genuinely news to me. I can't believe it. I, I, I looked at all the art and I was like, yeah, I've been following Munchal. I just look at the pictures. Now and I, I know just his look work. at the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was like, I was like, I know Munchal. I've been following him for like since we started. So yeah, I love this style. I loved all this stuff. I want to talk about the scream. I was so prepared. And then you just drop that. Like, you know, non casual guys, just a regular job, no big deal. That's amazing, man. <laughs> Well, thank you. But yeah, to pay the bills, I do that. So that's my regular day job. I'm in charge of all the printing and graphic design for the library. Um, and then every once in a while, we can sneak in a Mike Munshaw illustration into a promotion or something like that. So it does. I am able to do some uh, illustration work for, on my day job, too. But the sketch card stuff, that's my real creative stuff. That's when I sit down and draw, paint, whatever. Yeah, we're all speechless. Ian and I are just looking at <laughs> We're so speechless that Ian, he crashed that he's not even with us anymore. That he just, everything. I thought just... he was just making that face. I am such an idiot. I was looking at it, I was like, ah, he's just trying to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> Ian's picture has crashed a little yeah. bit for sure. Well, that's amazing, my friend. Yeah. That's so exciting. What a great, what a great opportunity to be yeah. part of no, something so iconic. Yeah. No, it's wow. very cool. So, and then I guess since Ian's, crashed and we just got to talk about something you uh, a number of years ago um when the washington dc comic-con was in town the library decided that they wanted to tie in with that for that weekend um so they were pulling comics and original art and stuff out of their archives and putting out for special exhibits and stuff and so then they were trying to come up with a theme and trying to figure out you know how to present this whole exhibit so then they came up um, well it's awesome con is the name of the convention in washington dc okay we came up i shouldn't say we i didn't they came to me after they figured it out but the name was library of awesome and that that was the name of the exhibit so then they asked me they go well could you draw a couple superheroes for us to be able to use in some of this stuff i was like yeah i think i might be able to do that i think i might you know just casually yeah why not sure that in um so i ended up doing four different um superhero librarians uh we did cutouts we did selfie stands we did banners um so that was really cool that was, i had a lot of fun doing oh, that man, so that I, was was so getting much paid. Fun. I was at work getting paid sitting at my drawing table drawing superheroes and nobody that came into my office could say are you doing anything i'd be like i'm working right now working on the new exhibit that's coming up <laughs> that's so awesome wow Oh, you've done great, man. That's so cool. Well, that's an amazing origin story, to say the least. <laughs> just just a little bit. One of one of my favorites for sure. Oh, so really? I guess yeah, I think so. I, I think it's great. Live it. You're just like this is boring. Because uh, before this, I was like, what am I going to talk about? These guys don't care about this stuff. But what? Cool. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> not true at all. No, I mean, no, I do care about that stuff 100. percent I mean, I think the my favorite thing about doing the show is getting these little insights and windows into everybody's lives and to see, you know, what they're doing and how they're doing it. Right. Speaking yep. of, mm -hmm. so your process, my friend, because yep. looking at your Instagram, which you can all check out um, and we will give you all that information. It's art of M2 and you can go ahead and check out all this amazing work there. Munchal's amazing work. We're, you know, I kind of want to know your process, man. So markers, what are you doing? How do you lay it down? What are some things you can oh. walk us through? I, every time that I take on one of these Marvel projects, I struggle at the beginning of how, what should I do or how should I do it? And especially now that I've done, what, four of them now? Five, well, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't, <gasps> Michael. I'm not sure how many I've done. But anyway, um, you know, at first it was Mark. You know, I got this whole set of Copic markers. It's easy to lay down the color. It's easy to find okay. a color that you want, what specific shade of red or whatnot. Um, but to back up a little bit for you, you know, I pencil it. I I call it a wireframe. I ink it, but I don't. Re it's not really the finished inks. It's usually just uh, 0.1 micron pen that I just go and make the outlines of everything so I know what the face is, what the body shape is, if I'm going to do a background or something like that. So I ink that and erase the pencils off of that. I'll go in with um, Copic Grays and I'll start to grayscale it to give it a little bit of um, tone 
a little bit of shadow, try to give it some shape, some feel, some volume. And then I'll go in with the markers and lay the colors in on top of that. Then I'll go back in with my ink pens and then I'll start really inking the final pieces to that. Ah. And that'll give it the weight. That'll give it the um, feel of what I'm trying to achieve then. And then last but not least, if I need any white, you know, if there's any highlight of whites or stars or shiny things or something like that, I'll go in with some white paint and then I'll get it up with that. You can't say shiny and stars and get me all excited. Don't don't say those those things. The I just start sweating. I get all confused and everything. So if I was doing a sketch card of maybe Guardians of the Galaxy, that their background requires a different type of background. There we go. I feel better now. Another Less character. stress. I might have to use some white paint for that. <laughs> well, what the the one you know, I love I love your character choices. I love what you did for Premiere. Um, you know, we're talking about your style and process. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I think what I really appreciate about you is your consistency. Like if you look at the Marvel Premiere stuff, I think one of the, the sketches that I'm like absolutely in love with, other than the Daredevil and the Wolverine, right, oh. is your uh, is your scream, right? I mean, oh. she's beautiful. Really? I think, yes. yeah, I think she's beautiful. I think she's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I I noticed that a little while ago because you know I follow you and I always see your posts and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, I absolutely love that. I would love to see you do on those big panel cards on mm-hmm. the next premiere, whatever, whatever that is. Yeah. I'd love to see your sequential art. You know, I don't think there's enough sketch cards on there that have like a little story, like just like two or three panels yeah. that kind of like break down a scene, like Killing anything. Me. Like You're I'm me. telling you, man. I'm just You're saying, man. Me. I'm just I'm just saying, man, short mini stories, man, mini comics. That you know would- what I mean? That would be great, except for the timelines that we have to deal with. So now oh, I'm just... talking APs, brother. I'm not uh, talking about uh, no. I'm talking well, APs, man. Okay, I wouldn't stress you out like that. No way. That's <laughs> cruel and unusual. What a horrible person I would be. Yes, do more for do for a little. That's beautiful. So beautiful. I want you on your next set to do all fifty of all your all cards this. sequential. Meet the deadline and still get it in on time. That's all I'm I want. We're understanding each other. I'm glad it's very clear between us. You no, let, no, no. Letter some balloons in there so there's dialogue. That would be even right. better. Advise, do some writing. Come yeah. on, Mike. <laughs> and have them tell one big story. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Oh, yeah. Just have them tell one big story from it's start to just, finish. It's a small request. I it's don't know why this is such a I don't one. know why it's Start so unreasonable. And then he's fighting Sabretooth and card right. number two. And yep. then Cyclops jumps in at well, number three. Plot in points too, and stay relevant with current Marvel stories. Okay, don't and forget by that the time either. We get to the end. It's Galactus coming onto the Marvel podcast. I know that. I know that it's, it sounds bizarre, but I have seen um, on sets previously, I have seen artists kind of get close to doing that just to keep it interesting for themselves, uh, where, they've, where, they've, where they've actually done things yeah. that while they might be separate pieces and they're not actually puzzle pieces, where they do complement each other because you can see it when yeah. they put a post on their deviant art when they've laid it out. You yeah. can see that maybe the background connects in some way or maybe the, way, the flow of the character looking might then connect with the next piece or something like that. So yeah. while they might not be puzzle pieces as such, which I think with Premiere is quite difficult to do because of the bordering. Yeah. Um, well, oh, yeah. and they specifically say no to the puzzle stuff. You know, they, Oh, do they? Really? Okay. Mm, that makes sense. Well, I guess I guess with Premiere, you've got the multi-panel, so that kind of gives yeah. you the opportunity to do yeah, that. It gives you a little bit of space. Uh, I love it, man. I, I love your Cosmic Ghost gonna... Rider, the Wolverine, the Daredevil. Like, they're just sick, man. Oh, well, thank you. You know, yeah. I... <sighs> You know, I was thinking about this before um, coming on, and you know, when you do so many of these, you know, I probably have done over almost three hundred of these by now. Mm-hmm. You know, what d- does it get to the point where you guys don't want that same thing anymore, and now it's time to reinvent? And I got to come up with something different. I have to come up with a different style because you're just like, well, there's how many of these out in the wild already? When you're going to do something different instead of just, you know, do another Daredevil or do another Ghost Rider or something like that? You know, he's been there, done that, seen that. You know, you got to do something else now. 
People are different, man. Like I was talking to a bunch of collectors and Ian and I have had this conversation too, where like some people look at their sketch cards and like, man, I'm just tired of portraits. You know what I mean? Like one, per- like a person's face yeah. or something, or I want the full body. You know, I don't think, I don't think people expect an artist to be, <laughs> you know what I mean? To go yeah. that crazy and switch up their style every time. I think the best thing I've noticed and like you and everyone else who I really appreciate the time and effort put into it is the time and effort. Like you can look at a sketch and be like, you know what? I can look at that scream from Marvel premiere, which I really do think is a great piece. And I can be like, yeah, that has so much personality. You know what I mean? That has like her face that has her face doing that iconic kind of like, you know, scream menace kind of craziness. And then everyone else also has that very unique pose as well. Unique to their character. Yeah. I don't think that ever gets old for me personally. Oh. I, don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't think that ever gets old on my yeah. end. I think someone someone it might have been uh, Matt Rogers from Upper Deck says uh, Wolverine doing Wolverine stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. best way to phrase it. It's like, well, what then, do you want to see you know, Wolverine do? You know. And again, I'm not a collector, so you have the Wolverine doing Wolverine stuff from 2017, 2018, yeah. whatever set they are. So then, you know, when the um, 2024 set comes out and there's Wolverine doing Wolverine stuff, and somebody else has that card, does that take away from your card, or do you feel it takes away from your card, or it's a one These of one are- and it's done, and so be it. These things are so hard to find mm. that when you find your Wolverine doing Wolverine stuff, you're like, that's my Wolverine doing my Wolverine stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. so subjective to that point. Yeah. Like a good example of this, of someone doing something to suit their style, which I think is what makes their cards unique, is Katie Cook. Um, Katie Cook does um, very simple illustrations, very like – like. It looks like superheroes from a children's story, right? Not a lot of detail, not anything like that. But what she would do is maybe put like a bubble and they would say something funny. Or there'd be like Galactus eating a planet and Surfer would be like ill. You know what I mean? Like the Scotty Young type of approach where it's not a lot of detail. Right. But Mm -hmm. it's not a lot. It's not a lot of uh, detail. But it is conceptually interesting, right? Yeah. I think that's what it takes when you do these things. As a collector, that's what I look for. You know what I mean? Like you look at your Cosmic Ghost Rider. You have Cosmic Ghost Rider having the three panels, and then on the back you have Baby Thanos with glasses. Like that is Oh, that's who it is. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. I love it. And I, I was I, I never even knew that existed. No. And- you know, you get to the point where you have all these cards, you've done a bunch, and you still have 10, 12 more to go. And you're like, well, who the heck am I going to draw now? Yeah. So, you know, Dr. Google, help me out, Dr. Google. And you just, just start Google. doing some stuff. And I was like, Cosmic Ghost Rider, what the heck is – and I was like, that is a cool-looking character with the chains and the big yeah, thing. Yeah, the bubble head helmet. Yes. And the flames trapped into the helmet. I was like, I could do a lot with that. And so then Dr. Google said, well, here's a purple baby. And I was like, what in the world is that? And then I was like, wait, that's baby Thanos. I was like, oh, I got to do that. And he had the sunglasses, and I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's really cool because it complements the card perfectly. That was smart, man. It looks great. But see, that kind of stuff though that doesn't get old for me you know what i mean like it doesn't and i've seen other artists do like after jim lee or after Mm -hmm. um um jack kirby and all this other kind of stuff you know what i mean so i've seen tribute pieces we've seen high concept pieces you know multi-characters in small or interesting ways i think i think you when you get a sketch card the only thing you don't want to see in a sketch card is someone not caring right and i because it yeah, it, it, that's for me, for me. And I, obviously I don't speak for everyone. I, I don't know how Ian feels about this. I'm pretty sure we're on the same page, but like, I just don't, I don't know. I want to see artists doing their thing, man, personally. You know, I struggle with just about every project of, and may, I, you know, I know I get too far into my head with it before I even start it, but I was like, you know, you want to create something that somebody wants, you know, I don't want to, I can draw something that I really like and, cool. I just spent X amount of time. I'm really happy with this. But to me, if nobody wants it, or if somebody opened a very expensive package, and that was in there, and they looked at it and said, oh, well, 99 cents on eBay with this thing. You know, I don't, you know, I want to create something that somebody sees and they like it. And they're like, oh, that is so cool. 
So I do want to make sure that I put some thought and time into it. So they do, they are pleased if that, you know, that happens to be one of the things that they end up pulling out. I have to say it's, it's immensely appreciated as well. And I think it, it, it shows in the work. I mean, one, one thing that I, it's kind of like pop will eat itself kind of uh, comes into mind um, in a way in that because, because we've been doing the podcast you've come into the group and then you've asked for character suggestions and I'm now looking on screen at some character suggestions that I put through into your requests. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking at them. They're now out. They're done. They're in the world. So it's, See, it's, I listen to you. You say I don't listen to you, but I listen no, to you. No, no, I never said you don't listen to me. I never said you don't listen to me, but I'm looking at your House of X, Powers of X. Oh, God. So cool. That you did for Premiere 2019. And I, I just... First of all, I, that was that was such a good series. I don't know if you've read it, but you've, you've, you've clearly gone and had a look at Doctor Google. Mm-hmm. But um, it was it was tremendous. I, I thought it was such a superb series, and I loved it. And I, I've tried to read beyond it, but it just all got a bit bonkers. So as as the X Men universe tends to do when Marvel just yeah. let it go off and do its thing. Uh, but if you keep it contained within one one twelve issue arc like that, very very complex and lots of good stuff going on, it completely reinvented the X Men for the next five years mm. like, you know, is, is effectively what it did yep. so um and i loved it um and so for me i'm kind of really looking forward to uh the next marvel annual set they always do an insert set mm. um, not sketch cards but it's always uh, covers and i'm if they don't do house of x powers of x for that mm. insert set for marvel yep. annual 1920 then yep. then i'm on the phone to <laughs> to our friends at upper deck going <laughs> come on come on why did you do it come on then. so you know for, for me i'm looking at this and thinking you know what i'm gonna start getting some powers of x house of x as kind of a little side pc and i'd be absolutely that's thrilled cool. to have your professor x oh god dude that'd be so cool that because that's <laughs> it's such an interesting new take on that character yeah. that whole helmet with yeah. the x over the eyes and and one thing we do um I, can't, I don't know if you, you'll have seen it, but recently we had that Marvel Panini set come out in the UK. It was stickers. I heard and, you guys and, talk about it, but yeah. I, I can't say that I've actually paid attention to the actual images. No, and- no. Well, we did we, we did a video of it, but um, we um, I can't say <laughs> I can't say I was it was my best camera work. But it's the first. You set. looked lovely. How dare you, sir? Oh, bless you, dear. Bless you, dear. It's the first set that's come out that I've seen, even though it's not an American trading card set, it's the UK license, where they've had a House of X, Powers of X. That's yeah, cool. that's the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. that's the cover of the yeah. first issue. And that's yeah. a sticker. But that is the beginning of my House of X, Powers of X collection. Yeah. Um, and so I guess I guess what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm a long way around of saying is that there is so much that's coming out that that does you know marvel put in 20 30 40 50 mm-hmm. you know 100 new things into their comics every year yeah. um and the ones that catch people's attention are your cosmic ghost riders you know your key issues spider gwen who knew that was going to be such a big big thing you know and she's now what 10 years in and, and everyone loves her um and house of x powers of x so i'm i'm really excited when artists say okay I can do Wolverine doing Wolverine things, but Wolverine's doing Wolverine, been doing Wolverine things since the late seventies. So yeah. let's let's actually try and bring some new characters in. So hats off for you for doing that. Well, okay, so I'm going to flip that on you for a second. And so I saw that um, post, and I can't remember who started it, what member, but you know, are there going to be House of X powers of X characters into this next set? And I was like, I hadn't even considered it. But then I saw you guys chime in and it would be great to see this character and this character and this character. And I had no idea what you guys were talking about. So sent Sherry to the local comic shop because I was too busy drawing. And I said, go find these two comics at the local comic shop and bring them back so I can see what the heck's going on here. <laughs> so she went, got them, brought them back. And I'm looking at them. I'm like, these characters are pretty cool. This is, yeah, okay. You know, now I just figured out how I'm going to do my next 10 cards to fill up. I got these brand new characters that I have never drawn before. So I draw them up. I was actually semi happy with them, which is for me is saying something. Um, They go out, they get approved. I start posting them and I posted them on 
the card collector's Facebook page. And I was like, you know what? This is going to be great. People are going to be, oh, this is awesome. This is cool. This is cool. I think maybe there was 10 likes on it, 15 likes. And I was just like, oh, well, that failed. <laughs> and I was like, that wasn't the response I thought I was going to get. So maybe people did like them and they just didn't, you know. But from an artist standpoint, you know, we're working in such a bubble, you know, we're, you know, just at our desk drawing, hoping that it's going to be well received, hoping that people are going to like it. And then you build this anticipation up in your head like, you know what? I did all right on those House of X cards. They're going to crush it. That's going to be all right. <laughs> and you post it and it gets like 15 likes and you're just like, son of a. Uh, <laughs> was it on Facebook that you posted it? <laughs> Did you, put was it on did you put them in the in the yeah, MCCW was, group? When the set was um, when we finally got approval with the thumbs up um, that we could start posting and stuff. I posted three or four of them, I think, as a group, and I'm sure it was more than ten or fifteen. I'm sure I'm exaggerating. Okay. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. in my brain, if, in my brain, it was not the reception that I thought people were going to be like. Finally, we got to see these characters, and this is so cool. It was just kind of like, oh yeah, okay. I will nice. say you can't you can't take you just can't take that at all from Facebook because Facebook doesn't show you know even yeah, though those get I'm buried constantly yeah like, that's the really horrible part about sometimes in the group is that sometimes somebody will post something for sale or whatever a new yeah. a card art whatever and it takes me ages to find it too yeah yeah but like there was a collector named Kevin St Jack who's Kevin our Kevin our, our buddy one. Kevin yeah Kevin number one. And he has been doing tons of research on seeing like when characters are being first premiered, mm -hmm. right? Where new characters are being added to combos. When's the first speculation? When's the first time they're coming into sketch cards? Is that going to be like, you know, a new thing for people? Are these going to be new PCs? And they are, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't, I don't know, and maybe I'm wrong, and I'm sure people will correct me, but new House of X characters on these premiere cards, the two panels, I don't see those anywhere. You know what I mean? So those might as well be kind of like the first iteration of these kind of like characters on such big panel cards. Also, I did want to thank you for writing your name and signing it so beautifully oh. because that needs to be a thing. It is so <laughs> lovely to get a sketch card, see the artist and be like, I can research this person now yeah. and look at their work. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome about that. Because now I do it's see very beautiful. <laughs> and it goes back to when did um, Women of Marvel come out? I forget oh, when that was. This. And for uh, what I have no idea. I, I want to say. I think it was the pull of Adam Hughes artwork or something that actually got me to buy some. And so I bought a, a few packs of those and I got a sketch card. And there was no name. There was no signature. There was no. And I was just like, this, what? And mm. I don't even know who this is. So it was at that point that I said, you know what? When I do sketch cards, I'm writing my name and I'm signing it. So at least somebody, even if they don't know who I am, they can at least go, OK, Michael Munshaw, I can Google that. And if they're so inclined, they can Google it or at least they know what they have or who. Draw it, so. I think the issue too is a lot of times people do want APs and like we've had this in the group where people have shown up the group fine like they're like here's a card can anyone identify the artist yeah. and it's like oh that's mine and he's like what and it's just the excitement of finding this long lost person like a like a lost cat or dog poster you know what I mean yeah. you just don't know where what's going on or where it's come from and I, I think that's that's the way to guarantee some APs man you know what I mean some people put the Instagram handle and stuff like that but I like seeing the artist his name and being able to find him i think yeah. it works out and better even, even when you're limited in space just m2 is such a nice little brand mark that you have. I, yeah, yeah. So yeah 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 well, that works out well on the front because you know i don't want you know my signature to be taken up you know half the real estate on those marvel premiere right. cards because yeah. as you know i try to work within the border of the marvel premiere because i think that kind of adds to the card that you can still see 100 yeah you're working within the design of the card. So, you know, just being able to stick a little small M2 somewhere it works out a lot better than trying to sign my whole name on the front of it then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. I love that. What I love is the magneto that really works within the frame of that card. 
Um, there's a oh, yeah. on Instagram, and it just it it's a perfect example of where keeping the frame of the card actually adds adds to that um, image. Um, uh, one thing I will say is it, just on that Facebook thing, you can't guarantee how, how, what Facebook is going to choose to show people because even you know I I've got set that it's supposed to set show me every single post because I set the yeah. group up so I want to see mm-hmm. what people yeah. are posting and yeah. you know as part of that is moderating it um, and there's and I wake up in the morning and I'll look through my notifications and then I'll go into the group and I'll see another five posts that it didn't tell me if people are posting oh. so it's kind of like it's crazy yeah. um, and some you know sometimes if people are posting stuff for sale they'll post it and it gets no interest then they'll do a fresh post with it a day later and it sells straight away because no one saw the first post because facebook decides <laughs> what it shows you um, yeah. but one thing i will say is that the um house of x powers of x if you're going to go by that barometer which you should never do um <laughs> is um Us artists we have very fragile egos and we well, just, well, we're well, isolated well, we're solid it's a very solitary existence that we lead so we're just looking for just these little nuggets a little bit of praise a little bit of praise all right we've, so we've all got to all right so so, you know, I know you can't take Facebook, but, you know, we're reaching, we're grasping. You'll, take, you'll right? take it where you can get it, isn't it? We've all, we've all become artist level in terms of our solitary <laughs> this year. So at least that's leveled everything. Um, your um, your um, House of X, Powers of X on Instagram has got more likes than your Daredevil. Oh, okay. So, you know, yep. if you're going to look at it like that. Um, <laughs> but, um, but no, I was, I, was, funny enough, I was just having a look um, on, and this is the other thing that I know artists do do, is they check eBay. So I was just having a look on eBay. Not not actually mainly to see if that House of X, Powers of X, Professor X was on there. And it's not. Um, so someone's probably got that in their collection. I know there's several big premiere collectors I'm going to hit up after this just to find out if they've got it. <laughs> Sarah Griffin. <laughs> Wayne Griffin. <laughs> um, actually, yeah. You really should check to see if they pulled it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if they've yeah. got it, I might be like, right, okay. Who do I have to sacrifice to get it? Um, the um, it's true though. Some of these sketches yeah. get deep sixed. That's the yeah. other like criminal yeah. part about it is that you can't find them. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. one, one thing I, I, I love seeing is this this set that you've worked on recently, this totally radical 80s. Ah, uh, so cool, oh, man. What's that about? Because I've seen so many people posting it, and it's it's obviously got official – well, it's got, got, got proper stock, yeah. Artists Unite. So, so yeah. can you tell us a bit about so, that? Um, on Facebook, Mike James, a uh, sketch card artist, um, has decided that um, – why don't I just have a bunch of artists get together and do a set? Um, you know, he has some views about the sketch card industry and about how sketch card artists are treated and that he felt this this might be a better avenue for artists to pursue. So what he did is he asked who wants to be a part of this group. And then you put your name in and said, I would like to be a part of this, Mike. Um, he chose who it was. And then you would say, I want to buy 10 cards, 20 cards, something like that. I think I was, I put myself down for 20. So we actually paid to have these cards printed, then the idea is when we get those, we're part of the, I guess the group isn't the right word, but a part of the sketch card thing and that we can do whatever we want to with those cards and sell them for whatever we want to. You know, so if I wanted to sell them for $2, I could sell them for $2. If I wanted to sell them for $200, I could sell them for $200. You know, we just had to stay within the theme of the total, totally radical 80s. Um, so being a uh, big pro wrestling fan, the first thing I thought of with the 80s was all the great wrestlers that were in yes. the, the characters awesome. and all of that. I was like, oh, my God, really? I'm going to be able to draw the Iron Sheik? No one's going to be able to yell at me that I'm wasting my time? Because I can be, no, it's a card. Look at this. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I went with uh, pro wrestlers. Um, so then I've just been drawing those and then posting those. And um it's been semi it, well. It was successful, you know. It's certainly been profitable for me to be a part of that, um, and I still have a couple of blanks left that I need to finish off and get those up on eBay to sell them on my eBay store. But yeah, so I think there was well, Mike could tell you more, but I want to say there's maybe 40 artists that were a part of this or so. Oh, okay, um, wow. You know, some did cartoon characters, some did musicians, movie things, stuff like that, and then it was so successful that he did a 90s set. And I got that 90 set a couple of weeks ago, and I've done uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin and the. I Rock. saw that. 
or the, and the rock <laughs> and i saw the rock I need to dive in a little bit more into the 90s pro wrestling but i would like to finish up the 80s i still have some wrestlers on my list that i want to do for the 80s cards you gotta oh, do undertaker great. man you gotta get that done undertaker, yeah, I remember. yeah you know what i was never i'm seeing we're gonna talk about wrestling now instead of sketch cards barely but I, I am not very good undertaker at this. Fan. But then I watched this Undertaker documentary on the WWE app, and now I'm a huge Undertaker fan. It was a great documentary. <laughs> it was great insight. I, was, I really understand um, Mark Calloway better and where it was coming from and all that. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I like the Undertaker now. <laughs> I like the Undertaker now. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I, what, well, this is a perfect opportunity to ask about a picture on your Instagram feed, which is a picture oh, of you standing next to two gentlemen with, with – uh, with with wrestling attire on, which basically means they're not wearing very much. Um, I'm going to share my they screen. Look good, this man. They look good, man. Because it's just it's just hilarious. Here we go. So, so, so this is so going on the tasting notes. It was 22 weeks ago, so it was it was when when life was still happening. And you could get that close to people. Yes. What's happening in this picture? <laughs> Someone's commented. You're slightly overdressed. <laughs> oh, good one, Sarah. So, here in Maryland, we have a local wrestling promotion called Maryland Championship Wrestling. Okay. And they will put on shows uh, within the area. One's right down the road from us, only about 15, 20 minutes. Um, and they're small little shows, but they are hilarious. We have such a great time. People are screaming, yelling. You know, it's really a throwback to when people thought wrestling was real back in the eighties and stuff that people took it seriously. And, but yet there's so many people in the audience that we all know what's going on, but we're just having a great time yelling and screaming and stuff like that. Um, so then the, they always have an intermission where you got to go, you know, get your beer and get your food and stuff like that. And then there's always photo opportunities to be had, you know, during that time. So here's my photo opportunity. And the tag team is, Oh, Sherry's going to yell at me that I can't remember this. Robbie and Bobby, it says on the Robbie screen, and yeah. Bobby. Thank you, Robbie very much. and Bobby. It's long since we've had Maryland Championship Wrestling because we can't do that. So Robbie and Bobby, the tag team. So they were taking pictures. So I was like, Abby, if I jump in there, will you take my picture with them? And she goes, yeah, I will. So there you go. So one That's of my a wonderful photos, photo. yes, I may be overdressed, but, you know, what can you do? It was the moment. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I love it. Robbie and Bobby. Robbie and Bobby. Robbie Shout and out Bob. to Robbie and Bobby. Yeah. For the Whatever. pose, I thought it was more of a musical. Like I wasn't sure it was wrestling right off the bat. I was like, I'm into it, man. Let's see this go. I want to see where this goes. <laughs> Could be a wrestling musical. Wrestling musical. You know what? No one I don't believe anyone's ever done a musical about wrestling. Wrestling no, can turn, easily turn into a musical. Like if they all took singing lessons, I think oh. it can happen. I think an oh. easy transition could happen there. This reminds me of the Buffy and Angel episodes where they, they did did it as a musical. Just my mind always goes back to those. I've never seen that. Oh, it's just so random. But didn't they have it where all the shows on that network did it in a certain week? So you had episodes of, I, I don't know if this is true, but I think you had episodes of things like Law and Order and people like CSI that did a mute. I know it sounds bizarre, but it wasn't just Angel and Buffy that did it. It was all See, the other ones as well. It's so bizarre, but I feel like he's right. Like, I feel like that probably existed at one point. I, if I not, it should be. It. Not you're that right. anyone can do so, that. So I'll just go with what you were saying. But yeah, when you're talking just, about um, a wrestling musical, it made me think of, you know, The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke, that movie. Yeah. I don't so know if you guys cool, saw that or not. Oh, the yeah. One scene in that movie that I can't watch, it just strikes fear in me, is when they had that small little wrestling convention inside that little volunteer fire department. Mm. And, you know, they're all gathered. They all think it's going to be a great day. They're going to make all this money and everything. And they open the doors. Fans come flying in. Money's being exchanged. It looks like it's going to be a great day. And then, like, within an hour, you know, they're all just sitting there twiddling their thumbs in a dead room and stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, that's my worst nightmare of a Comic-Con where we're just sitting there and there's no fans. It's such a terrible oh. feeling. <laughs> And that, that whole scene, it just churns my stomach. I was just like, I can't watch this. It's too close to home. It's just too close to it's home. It's too real. It's too yeah. real. It's too real. <laughs> Strangely enough, I have been to because the cons we have over here are fairly small. There, there were bigger ones in Birmingham. I say were. I'm sure there will be again, but uh, that I went to where you would have a section 
of and it was in this massive shopping mall so it was kind of spread out around it and they had different areas and you had people who were vaguely famous in the 80s for being on a tv show and then you had people who are really hot now um and they put them in different areas so the area of vague people who were famous in the 80s they were there and they were literally just sitting there like Yep. <laughs> just just kind of looking at each other and it was it was it was the most and it was the first time i'd ever been to any type of event like that and i was like oh my goodness that's so sad and it actually yeah. made you feel uncomfortable walking past them because yeah. it's like it's like oh, i'm just walking past you because i need to get over there and it's, it's like, like speed dating when it's that small and not yeah. enough things going on you're just like i'm sorry i'm i'm just not that into you and then you like hop over that, to the next that's person that's my thing not my thing i'm going right by but yeah, there's right. so many comic cons where you're in come the afternoon, you're just sitting there and you're just like, I could be home drawing, really? I could be right. doing something else besides this, and you're just like, oh, this is just gut wrenching. Downtime, but is, horrible. But is that the exception rather than the rule? Because you know, I know you you do them. Yeah, for the most yeah, for the most part, you know, it it's hit and miss. I you know, if I could ever be able to predict what cons are going to be successful and which ones aren't, I would be a lot better off because I would only pick the successful ones then, you know, but you know, you get to the point where you understand which ones you have a better chance at than other ones. And so then you just got to kind of cut your ties with the ones that you're just like, you know what, it probably won't be a profitable weekend for me. So I'm, I'm going to pass that one over then. More than fair. More than fair. Yeah. Um, the, um, uh, what was I going to say? Sorry, <laughs> my my head's gone. I've still got that wrestling picture on the screen, and it's just distracting me. <laughs> all I can see, all I can see is uh, you know what? Oh, Robbie oh, and Bobby please. are so happy that they have a fan over in England now that they're internationally known now tag team. No, um, uh, they wonderful. should be. <laughs> they should be. I've never seen live wrestling. We don't tend to have it much over here. So, um, so I've been to Disney World, so a little bit, but other than that, I haven't seen any actual live. <laughs> yeah, or when, Marvel I've Master- or when Marvel Masterpieces drops on EPAC, that'll be like wrestling. But that that is wrestling. It lasts for twelve minutes. Oh. It's bloody and it's over. Yeah. That is wrestling. <laughs> That sounds like a relationship I had in the nineties. Anyway, so um, let- we've all had that relationship. <laughs> we've all we've all had we've that. Yeah. Robbie and Bobby will have it. All of us will have that. Robbie and Bobby. Robbie and Bobby. I wonder what that must be. That must be tough for them because I know at least with. Okay, so at least you're able to carry on working. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. because what you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's- Robbie and Bobby. They their career, are like many. Yeah. Unemployed. Yeah. There's no. There. There's no. You know. They can't do any of that. So. It's terrible. You know, I feel not only do I feel for them because, you know, that was something that they did and they loved and all of that. But I feel for us, too, because, you know, we don't get to go do that stuff anymore. Well, yeah. But yeah. No, it's got to be terrible for them that, you know, overnight, you know, they had a show scheduled two weeks like mid-March, I think. Right. Or no, mid-April. I'm sorry. Mid-April. Um, just right down the road from us. And of course we had tickets and we were getting all psyched up and stuff like that. But then when all this started, we're like, is there going to be a show? Is there not going to be a show? What's going to happen? And then, you know, they unfortunately said, we're done. We're, you know, closing up shop for the time being and can't put on any more shows now. Tough, tough. I know. I know. I was like, I mean, all of the, um, all of the, um, I used to work in the West end and I've, I've got friends. In fact, there's one gentleman that I hired, back in the box office in 99, 2000. And he's just taken voluntary redundancy after two decades of working in the West End because mm. there, there is, there, there is no work. Yeah. Like the industry is absolutely yeah. on its knees. So, yeah. um, and it's the same with a lot of live entertainment and, you know, indeed a lot of sectors. So, um, if you were, if you're making hand gel and face mask, you're okay. So, um, so obviously you're able to keep working and you're able to keep doing work it's, on sets. You know, and I hate, <sighs> I don't want to, I know during these times, I hate saying something like this, but I've been doing fabulous during these past couple of months. I really thought that when all this hit and the unemployment hit and the furloughs hit and all of that, I was like, well, that's it. We're done. Um, You know, I'll just be working on stuff for inventory and inventory items and just stocking up on sketch covers and prints and stuff like that and just have a whole backlog so that when Comic-Cons do come around again, 
I'll be like, hey, look at everything that I have. But it has not been that. People are still interested. People still seem to have some extra money. Um, commissions have been very good for me. The sets have been good for me during this time period. So I hate saying it because I know there's so many people that are struggling and just don't aren't as fortunate. But I'm really blessed that during this time, you know, I haven't skipped a beat. Mm. That's great. Good. That's good. That's well, really nice. That's off to you. So you've got, you've got, here. you've got sets that you've worked on that you can't talk about. So that the that, that are up and coming. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, simply because I, I wanted to mention it because it's been on social media a lot in the last forty eight hours, and just to get your your quick take on it, or maybe have a deeper take on it, is is mm-hmm. the new uh regulation that upper deck have to uh, yeah. go under mm-hmm. which is the 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 i believe it's a tax related thing but yep. uh, for california based companies mm-hmm. yeah. where they are asking people to register art, asking artists effectively to be a registered business yeah mm-hmm. so yeah. can you talk about your your kind of take on that and whether how much it will affect you and what you see the imp- repercussions i guess as as, as yeah. that Potentially. Affected me by one hundred and ninety six dollars and fifty eight cents. So that was the amount of money that I had to pay for my LLC license with the state of Maryland. Um, I probably should have done that anyway before this happened. This is just kind of the thing that's pushing me into that. You know, I was always a sole proprietor from a tax position with my expenses and um putting in what I was making, you know, anyway, as a business, as sole proprietor, but they don't give you an actual business license for that in the state of Maryland. So I had to apply for an LLC license and then they'll give me a business license with a number and then I can supply that. But you know what? I probably should have done that long ago anyway. So, you know, it's, it, it is what it is, but it is very interesting that, you know, there's a lot of artists that I can see won't want to do that. You know, in my previous lifetime, um, before kids, I had my own graph. I was a freelance graphic designer, so I ran my own company. So uh, M Square Design, and I had bank accounts, credit cards, ledgers, different taxes, all of that. So I'm used to that, and I'm used mm-hmm. to running the business like that, rather than just an artist. And okay, pay me fifty bucks, and oh, you know, yeah. here's yeah. here's your thing. So I'm used to it. I just got to get back into the rhythm of it again, of being a full blown business. So I applied for M square design again, LLC. Um, and then when I get that business license number, then I'll be cool with what they're able to do. But I have heard conflicting information about this because there's some artists out there that have said they've contacted the state of California and the California people said, no, you don't need to do that. That, companies within California are getting a little confused. And if you're a contractor out of state, you don't need to have a business license. So I don't know. I went ahead and did it and, you know. Yeah. Okay. That's it's way. interesting. I think, I think it, I mean, I've, I've read a little bit about it. Um, there seem to be some uh, folk who are really upset about it. Other folk who are kind of, okay, it is what it is. Other folk are saying yeah. I won't be able to do sketch cards for them again. Um, I personally don't understand it because I don't understand American tax laws i know there are different America, okay, we don't either <laughs> don't it's, even worry about that. it's bad enough in this country so yeah. you know i can't imagine yeah. <laughs> how tricks so what little there. research i did into it it seems like they were doing it because of the uber and lyft drivers and that they were contractors and they don't want them to be contractors anymore yeah. so it's and again, I could be completely off base. This is way outside my wheelhouse. I probably shouldn't even be talking about this. But from the things that I saw, it seemed like they wanted the state of California wanted those guys to be paying business yeah. taxes. Yeah. The- and, and, you know, um, someone's posted that on the group. So it's not like it's, you know, from your from your lips, as it were. Someone, I, I've read that as well. So yeah. who knows? Um, I'm yeah. sure, you so know, I, I know that. The sad thing would be is if it you do have to have a full blown business license. And then all of a sudden, what, 50% of the artists just say, I'm not gonna do sketch cards anymore. It's just not worth the hassle. It's just not worth me doing that. Yeah, so yeah. I, you know, we'll just have to see how it all shakes out, I guess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's very early days. I think people- Yeah, exactly. It's, ways, it's so early that it's yeah. hard. But, first, first reactions were a bit angry. I think, I mean, yeah. once people have slept on it and there's more clarity, then they'll be- Yeah, you know, at first when I was, thinking about it i was like ah, i gotta do a business you know get a 
checking account and do all of that. But then as I, I thought about it and then I was like, you know what? I should have done this a while ago anyway, just from my tax standpoint, it's just much easier to keep organized to understand my expenses versus what's coming in and all of that. So I was like, you know, this is this is the right thing to do, at least for me in my position. Yeah. 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 I think so. Well, well, I'm sure we'll find out more about it um, oh. in due course. So uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> there'll be a lot of chat about it. In fact, there already is oh. a lot of chatter about it. So, yeah. um, I, Michael, I, I, I love talking to you. Thank you for coming on. This was so uh, much fun. No, thank you guys. Yeah, we had a good time this morning. Um, and so, so it's Sunday for you. So, was it, what, what's your what's your what's your day entail? Because you mentioned your, your kids. I believe they're grown up now. So they're, they're grown not, and gone. They're, they're not, they're not with you. They're out. They're out. So you place yourself on their own. Change the locks. That's what my dad did. I mean, he did it when I was 15 and told me just to go get ice cream. But, you know, eventually, apparently, that's what you're supposed to do. I don't know. That's what I hear. That's what I hear people say. He actually did that to me once. Yeah. He was like, he was like, no, really sick. And he was like, yeah, son, you know, go to the grocery store. Go grab this. I was like, yeah, sure, dad. Change the lock on me. Not, you know, just because he was changing the lock. He was like, like, yeah, my key's not working. You haven't gotten the hint yet. Sick, sick guy, sick guy. Random. So, Michael, but yeah, well, Mike's- <laughs> well, rude. Okay, you didn't like my story, Ian. Fine. I'm not going to share anymore. But that's okay. The family therapy with mm. the Marvel car. Okay. <laughs> yeah, now, Sundays, usually I try to make my catch up day. You know, I always have at the beginning of the week in my head. I need to make headway on this series or I got to get this many cards done for this job. I got this commission I want to get done. I got this commission. You know, I try to have a schedule set up in my head come Monday. And by the time Sunday rolls around, maybe I'm 50 percent successful at that list. And so then Sunday's kind of my catch up day where I was like, OK, so now I'm just going to really bear down, stay here in the studio and kind of get caught up on what I need to get done. Yeah, good. Good. Well, uh, I hope it's a productive one for you. Um, yeah. Before we go, I just wanted to ask you: Do you um, um, do you collect? Because um, you mentioned that you sent you sent your beloved out to get some powers of X, House of X comics. Oh, yeah. do, do, mm-hmm. do you do you kind of collect and read anything, or do you do? You- yeah, I still collect comics. Believe it or not, I got whew, thirty boxes upstairs, or something like thirty long wow. boxes, or something. I still have books from when I was a teenager, you know, when I was doing my paper route and shoveling driveways, shoveling snow from driveways and stuff. You would run and go buy a stack of comics and stuff. I still have those. So it's quite an extensive collection. I still get some to this day. So um, I just finished um, getting caught up. I'm way behind on everything because obviously work comes before you can yeah. sit down and read and stuff like that. But I'm starting to get caught up on Bendis' Superman and the Action Comics, uh, Legion Superheroes. Um, and Ed, there's a, I still haven't finished Walking Dead. I think there's 20 or 25 issues that are still sitting over on my stack there. So wow. I need to finish that issue. But yeah, no, I still collect, buddy. Good. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I've, I've kind of jumped off because I had to cut spending because of a furlough. So, um, and I'm actually. So I take- will say I do have to blame Norn for something, Go and on. it's his fault because what? I wasn't really paying attention to the Marvel Masterpieces 2018 thing. You know, it was great to be part of it. Beautiful artwork and all of that. And then he started spouting about the preliminary art set, which I <laughs> wasn't even paying attention to. And I didn't even know it existed. And then he talked about it. I said, huh, what's that all about? And so then I went on to, you know, Dr. Google and asked Dr. Google about it. Dr. I was, Google. I was like, oh, my God, those things are awesome. Oh, nice, man. So I have been dabbling a little bit when I see one that's not priced too bad. I was like, eh, let me grab that. So you mean the I, cards? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've oh, got yeah. a few spares. So yeah. drop me your address after this and I'll get, oh, I'll get them out to you. No, I've got a couple of spares. I might, I'd, yeah, rather man. You, I'd rather you have them. Uh, All right. So, yeah, Seriously, man. Over. They're a nice I'll set. I'll actually just... Black Cat for those. How about that? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Look, wheeling and dealing. Yeah, I don't so. have any extra. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to have <laughs> those. But yeah, we got to get you a full set of that, man. They're a great set. Yeah. That's a great no, bunch the, of, some of the And, you know, I'll just sit there and look at it and just look at it and just look at his lines and just look at his thought process. And I was like, these are so much cooler than the finished cards. I was like, this stuff is awesome. Yeah, that's how I feel about it, too. It's uh, it's the only set 
So, you know, you've heard me talk about this, obviously, but I just don't collect sets like that, you know, just because, like, I'm so focused. But I collected that full set, man. That's a great set. That is cool. It's good. Uh, yeah, no, and I'm very excited. I believe that um, in the new release that Dave is doing a preliminary art. So I'm looking yes. forward to seeing yes. what it's look like. Tim. I um I I I I'm, what I'm really 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 looking forward to I'm I'm so excited about that 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 new series um, is the number of pieces that we've seen so far I think is 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 extraordinary given that oh uh, yeah I can't believe it, it seemed like every day he was posting something different and I was like yeah how's that possible how they yeah. like but it's, it's probably awesome. about 30 maybe that have been authorized for release um but of course then last weekend he put the original paintings for a lot mm-hmm. of those on his website and i yeah. looked and the black cat was there and uh, I, I wasn't able to to afford it but uh yeah. and it's subsequently now sold but it was it was interesting how quickly a lot of them sold i mean literally i it, he put the link on the mmc group and i think he put it on his own uh feeds as well and within half an hour at least half of them had yeah. got them and deservedly yeah. so uh, but there there is a glimpse of one preliminary art um in black the widow that they put out but the interesting thing is we haven't seen the finished piece so i'm i'm mm-hmm. dying to see and what fascinates me is the different process because simone's way the yeah. way simone works is uh, is almost ethereally different to, mm-hmm. to almost everyone else i've yeah. seen in that rather yes. yeah. unique simone way yeah um but Dave's style as well, and how he's approached these these pieces, and the the tones and the um, the palette that he's used on the pieces I've seen. Yeah. Actually, there's there's quite a lot of variation in there just yeah. with the pieces we've seen. So how the PAs are going to look and, and reflect that, I'm 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 really excited. Yeah, really excited. Uh, yeah, seeing those. And I, and I know he listens. So Dave, um, soon, my friend, um, <laughs> come and talk. Can't wait! So excited um, to see all the work you've done, my friend. Uh, as well, we've <laughs> we've we've had his mum on, so it's only fitting. I know. So uh, is that really fair when he posts stuff on Instagram and that his mom then says, "Great work! This is amazing." I was like, "Does those comments?" Is that fair? <laughs> is he getting extra praise <laughs> because that's what he did? How All dare you? mom's going to tell us that the thing's great. We can put up a yeah. stick figure and our mom can go, that's such a nice stick figure. That's the best one. So does it count really when his mom puts that up? I don't can, know. We, can we test this? Dave, if you're listening, <laughs> can you do that a stick so figure great. picture <laughs> of, and I'm not I'm yes. not giving you a commission here. It's just a stick figure, but you can bill me if you want to. Do a stick figure of Noren and I and put it on your Instagram feed and see if your mom writes it. <laughs> she was like, this is great work. <laughs> Great and work. it's crazy because Dave best. actually has great work, so it's not like something on the fridge, yes. right? But it's just so funny to yeah. conceptually think about that. You're right. Yeah, that's good. Is that no, fair? I laughing. I forget which one it was. You know, obviously his pieces are amazing. Obviously, obviously. And, obviously. that's you know, why we I was looking joke. at one of them, and then you know, you just see the comments, and the first comment was from Julie, and I was just like, oh, that's too funny. That oh, she must be so proud. That's she must great. be so proud. I mean, oh. I mean, she would have been oh, anyway. Oh, yeah, okay. How could she? I think it's so great to see this kind of legacy carry over into the cards, right? What a great yeah. concept. What a great yeah. thing to be. Oh, yeah. No, I was blown away when they announced him. And I was just like, that is so cool. That is, yeah, such a great it's concept. It's funny. Even when we were speculating it, I think Ian and I, we were kind of certain at one point, but we were like, did they? I mean, that's kind of crazy if they did. You know what I mean? Because we were just all kind of still wondering about trying to figure this out wondering in the dark but yeah it's just so awesome to have this kind of coming to us and hopefully september hopefully soon so we'll have to have yeah. like a, a round table and stuff like that yeah well we definitely will we definitely will and, and michael are you allowed to say if you did sketch cards for that set I don't understand your question, and I refuse. Oh, no, good. no, the line, the line broke up a little bit. Yeah. there. the line broke up a little bit yeah. there. That's okay. That's okay. Um, we'll. Um, there, there's a black SUV no pulling up right outside with a, <laughs> with, a with a guy with a syringe and a hood. Um, <laughs> well, that went dark. Um, <laughs> Michael, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Munchell. Uh, Thank you, Michael for, for, Munchell. for giving us some of your that. Sunday. And now I know how to say it's not art. art I read it as art of M two, but yeah. M squared makes perfect sense. So, uh, well, but, yeah, but M two M squared. Yeah, you know, 
Um, so that's where people can find you. And yep. is there anything else you want to pimp or, or, or advertise or shamelessly promote while, while, while you're with I us? Got, you know what? The life of a sketch card artist is terrifying in that I have four to five projects that are done in the can and I can't tell anybody about them. So I can't have a secrecy, man. So all I can just say is keep an eye out on my Instagram and my Facebook and things will be coming up and being posted the different stuff that I have coming up. Um, obviously with no comic cons, people don't have a chance to meet artists or get art done or anything like that. So if you're interested in a commission, I still have some APs feel free to reach out and I'll get you on the list. All right. Uh, I, I would say that's an absolute must just everyone just support 100 percent. you know if you dig an artist then you know reach out and, and 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 give them some some green to uh give you some gorgeous art so it's a great way to participate in a virtual con type of thing yeah you yep. know it's really yeah. wonderful exactly mike you've been delightful all right thanks you've been the guys. best brother great time all right mike you know you know you know how we end this show i know well i hope so because, you know, maybe one of the co-hosts flubs the end of it all the time. So I don't know if he, like, infiltrated me. Did I Thank get you a for punk? saying that. I really – see, Ian, are you listening? What I'm here for. Gosh. What I'm here for. Thank all you. right. So here we go. I'm going to make see if I can get this right. Enjoy collecting. Boom. Mike, so girl. close. It's happy collecting. God. <laughs> Is it happy collecting? No, it's a joy collecting. <laughs> I just like doing it. I'm sorry. I'm done. That's, no. I he just likes – he actually up. just likes – with me that's what it is <laughs> well it worked no, you said because it i was there i was like oh i got it wrong <laughs> you're so keeping this in <laughs> this is wrong wrong this is wrong this is how you wrong. treat your guests this is how you treat your guests. <laughs> thanks for listening to the marvel car collectors podcast visuals and tasting notes for each episode can be found on our facebook page you can subscribe and leave us a voicemail via our home on anchor.fm forward slash mccp we're also on itunes spotify and all major podcast platforms please take a second to subscribe like and review our show wherever you get your podcasts our podcast can be found by googling at the mcc pod which will also find us on facebook twitter youtube and instagram our facebook community is at mccw marvel car collectors worldwide and mmc marvel masterpieces collectors the great music we use is called rocket power by kevin mcleod thanks to the collectors artists and creators who support the marvel cards fan collective we'll see you next time and remember it's a small hobby but a fun one Make mine marvel and enjoy collecting.